Hey, and welcome everybody to our webinar today called Scaling the Mountain, Marketing Operations in Large Global Enterprises, Part 2. Uh, thank you all for joining today. And this is really a follow-up uh, session from our presentation at the Adobe Summit in Las Vegas back in March. Um, we're super excited to have everybody today and uh, just wanted to introduce myself. This is Pierce UJ Nwala. I'm the founder and CEO of NAC and Revenue Pulse. And we're super excited today to be joined by Ryan O'Shea, the Manager of Marketing Operations, Global Demand Center at Citrix. Welcome, Ryan. Thank you, Pierce. Um, so we've got some great content uh, lined up for everybody today, but before we get into that, just wanted to go through a couple of housekeeping items. Um, you'll see in the bottom uh, bar of your Zoom that there is a, a questions uh, section in that Zoom panel, a Q&A it's called. And so basically anytime you know we're going through here, feel free to send us questions in. We want to make this as interactive as possible and make sure that everyone gets value out of today's session. Uh, we're, we're gonna run around 30 minutes today for the prepared content, and then we're gonna make sure that we have lots of time at the end for Q&A. Uh, so please make sure that, that you send us your questions as you have them. Uh, everyone's going to be on mute, and uh, we will be sending a video recording of the session afterwards. So uh, just a little bit of an agenda. Uh, for those of you who may not have been at Summit uh, back in March, Ryan's going to do a really quick recap uh, of the presentation that he gave uh, at Summit. So for those of you who were there, you know it'll be a quick refresher for you and he's added some new content in as well. Uh, Adobe was kind enough to give us a lot of uh, feedback for those of you who are in the audience on things that you guys wanted to hear or you wanted Ryan to go deeper into. And so, We've taken that audience feedback and really put together a session here based on your feedback uh, that is geared to, to how to scale email in a large global enterprise. So we'll go through that, we'll leave some time for a Q&A and then we can wrap up with some final thoughts. And so just to kind of set the stage for today's presentation, I think a key theme back in Las Vegas in uh, March, and this is something that we hear from, from all of our global enterprise customers that we work with, is this concept of balancing flexibility and control. We understand that in the enterprise, there's a huge amount of control that really has to be uh, put into place in order for people to meet their brand standards, to adhere to compliance requirements, and to really make sure that the programs can go out in a timely manner. Now, at the same time, all of us as marketers love to be creative. Um, and that's really a key reason that a lot of people get into marketing is that they can exude that creativity that we all have. I think Adobe is really doing a great job to inject that creative element back into marketing. And, uh, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that today. So with that, I'm going to pass things over to Ryan. Uh, to give a quick recap of what he went over at the Adobe Summit. Ryan, over to you. Great. Thanks, Pierce, and thanks to the NAC team for having me join you here today, and, and also for inviting me to, to join the team out at, at Adobe Summit in Las Vegas a few weeks ago. Uh, as Pierce mentioned, uh, my name is Ryan O'Shea, and I'm the manager of a global demand center uh, here at Citrix and our marketing operations organization and uh, and I'm happy to join you today to talk about our transformation to try and achieve that balance that Pierce mentioned between flexibility and control in order to achieve scale in our marketing operations. 
Um, a little bit of background about me and about Citrix. So I'm, as I mentioned, I'm the manager of the Global Demand Center at Citrix. And if you're not familiar with Citrix, we're a global cloud computing company. We've got over 8,000 uh, employees worldwide, and, and we provide secure digital workspace networking and analytics solutions to enable mobile work styles. Um, a little bit of background about myself. I've got over 13 years of marketing in large, or, uh, large enterprise organizations. I've been at Citrix for uh, the last six years, but before that I've worked at companies like Lenovo and Cisco and Nortel and at 8,000 employees, Citrix is actually the smallest company that I've ever worked for. So I've got a lot of experience and seen a lot of different ways that companies have uh, tried to achieve their, their scale with their marketing uh, organization. Um, I've had roles in demand generation, email marketing for B2B and B2C and e-commerce uh, teams. And, and now the, the demand center team that I'm running here at Citrix is responsible for the execution of marketing campaigns uh, through Marketo to support our worldwide marketing as well as field sales organizations worldwide. Uh, so I'd like to go into a little bit about how we use Marketo uh, at Citrix and, and how we uh, use that platform as, as, a, as a way to execute our campaign. So uh, as, a, as a large organization, we actually have four separate Marketo instances and that, that gives us quite a bit of complexity in the way that we execute marketing. Uh, in order to manage that, we have uh, about 15 different user permission groups in, the, in those Marketo instances, and those are used to help control which users are, are allowed to do which tasks. That, that, that helps to mitigate any risks that uh, someone might do something that they're, they're not intending to do if, it, if that's not part of their typical job. Um, and we've got about 25 users who are logging into the platform on a daily basis to, to do their day-to-day -day business. But overall, we have over 100 users who have access to uh, at least some portion of our Marketo implementation to, to do some form of their job in one of those different permission groups. And, and altogether, we have over 15 million records in our databases. And uh, so all that together is a pretty, pretty complex implementation. And uh, we have a, a lot of um, a lot of reason to, to need to be sure that we're applying the right governance and right control over that to make sure that our, our programs work the way that they're supposed to. So if, you're, if you want to move on to the next slide, I'll go into a little more detail about how our marketing operations team is organized at Citrix. So we're broken up into the four different teams, and the, the first one is our marketing operations and strategy team, and that's that's where my team sits. We're the, the global demand center there, and we're actually broken up into two different teams within that demand center. One is the, the campaign team on the left, and this team supports marketing program managers to execute campaigns on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, those could be things like uh, emails in support of webinars or live events or road shows or any kind of email blast campaigns that support our stakeholder groups in worldwide marketing or in field marketing. Uh, and th this team is organized to support those stakeholder teams um, by geo. So if we have teams that are uh, requesting campaigns from our EMEA or our America's Field Marketing. We, we have dedicated uh, people on these teams to support those users. And the other half of this team is our, is our technical team, and they're responsible for our Marketo program architecture. So this is the, the team that creates campaign templates to enable that campaign team to support the business day to day, and also do complex and custom campaigns like advanced nurtures, engagement nurtures, and, and things like that. Um, and the other teams that we have are digital technology, data management team, business intelligence team. Uh, they, they run the rest of the operations organization um, associated with their groups. So uh, I'd like to talk a little bit next about this transformation journey that, that Citrix, uh, in particular our marketing operations team, has been going through to, to try and achieve that balance that, that Pierce was talking about between flexibility and control. So to do that, I'll, I'll go back to, to where we started. And this is maybe a year or so ago. And I would say that we were all the way on the left side there of that, that balance where we were, we were heavy in the flexibility side of things. So we were uh, building almost completely custom emails every time there was a request. We had, um, we had a couple of digital asset producers, uh, email producers, designers um, with HTML skills who would build pretty much every email on a made-to-order uh, basis. Uh, this allowed for nearly limitless flexibility. They could build just about anything that was requested of them. 
Uh, and so I like to say that they could handle any request that came through, but as a, a bottleneck with just two individuals creating every email, they couldn't fulfill all of requests that came through. It limited our capacity and we had frequent revisions. Someone would request something, they would build it and see the test and say, ah, I'd like something a little different. So that added a lot of cycles to our production time and, and we weren't able to achieve the scale that we were on it to achieve. So we, we started our journey to try and increase our capacity and our scale, and we moved further to the side of control. And this is our, our, our tokens and templates and um, our, our cloning uh, stage. So we created a variety of program templates in Marketo that were heavily tokenized to create all of the elements of that email. Uh, there were tokens for the subject line, tokens for the headlines, for the body copy, for the dates, for the speaker names, titles, everything was tokenized. And this was done with the intent to allow for non-design users, non-HTML skilled users to be able to create emails at scale with a, a, a pretty significant degree of, of control and, and brand governance. We knew that if we cloned that program template, filled in the tokens, we would have a, a, a perfect rendering email that met brand guidelines and we know what it would look like and we could we could develop these pretty quickly. The, the amount of time it took to build an email dropped dramatically and our scale was increased. We, uh, this was successful for a little while, but we started to realize that it offered no flexibility to our requesters. If we didn't already have a predefined program template that met their needs exactly, we had a hard time handling a request that, that fell outside of that, that predefined template. Um, so, our requesters were asking for something more. They wanted some some more creative license in the, the emails that they were creating. So uh, fast forward to where we're moving today is achieving that balance with blueprints and modules. And this is where NAC has been uh, a, a transformative partner for us to, to allow for our users to have that flexibility and the creative uh, elements that they look for in their email campaigns, but also allow our marketing operations team to implement the kind of control and governance that we need to in order to, to make sure that everything meets our brand guidelines and meets our, our rendering guidelines and, and, and achieve the level of quality that we, we expect of ourselves. So the, the blueprints in NAC allow us to um, create templates or guides for how an email would be built but allows those end users to take a series of individual modules that you see on the right to mix and match and create the exact layout that they need for that particular campaign and as a marketing operations team we're able to define what order they're allowed to go in so we, we don't end up with somebody building an email where they uh, put modules in an order that don't don't make sense. I call it the Mr. Potato Head version, and and we're able to implement some standards to how those emails, how those modules get implemented, so that they 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 render property and, and they look like a professionally built um, quality email that that we strive to achieve at Citrix. Um, and so we wanted users to be able to have that creative touch and mix and match to find the perfect layout for their particular campaign and not rely on the, the templates and tokens the way that we had before. Yeah, that's that's awesome, uh, Ryan. Thanks for sharing kind of your your journey on, on how you guys scaled your email creation at Citrix. I think one question that I have, and I'm sure uh, people in the audience as well, especially those uh, who are on Marketo are, you know, how did, it sounds like you went from a very tokenized model to something that doesn't rely so heavily on tokens. How do you still use tokens at Citrix and are you still using them? Yeah, I'm glad you asked that. So I've, I've gotten that question before and it's, you know, I, I've been asked, so are you you saying that tokens are a way of the past, are you not using tokens anymore? And, and no, I, I, absolutely not. I, I don't want to make, give the impression that with Mac we don't use tokens. I do believe that tokens are an incredibly powerful feature in Marketo and, and they still have a very valuable place in our, in our operations, even with using NAC to create our emails. One example of, of how they, how tokens would still be useful would be in an email series where you don't necessarily need variety or, or that flexibility. One, one example might be a, a roadshow series. So for example, 
uh, every year. Citrix has a big um, customer um, event. It's actually coming up in a couple of weeks, Citrix Synergy. And after Synergy, we do a variety of, of road Synergy on the road events where we go to a bunch of different cities and, and have a, a shortened and condensed version of our main customer event. And in doing so, we do email uh, notifications and invitations to our contacts in those areas to invite them. Well, that series of emails might be a couple of dozen different campaigns associated with each city, and we don't need to build every one of those emails as an independent email uh, when the only difference might be the date and the city and the, the location of that particular event. So tokens can still have a very valuable use to uh, expand the use of your emails uh, by applying tokens for those things and, and uh, scaling them out using Marketo. Awesome. Yeah, that that's great to great to hear that background. And and I know for all of our enterprise customers, tokens are, are such an amazing way to scale uh, your marketing operation. So definitely good to hear kind of the balance there and that you guys continue to use them. So that was kind of our recap of uh, the Adobe Summit presentation. Now really the next section here is where we took uh, the feedback that was given to us. We had an audience of almost 500 people, and I think almost 200 of you guys had written us back to say, hey, that was good information, but we want more of the backstory on how you know, Ryan was able to achieve these things at Citrix and what his journey looked like. So we'll get into this, this part here. And really what, what we want to do is uh, give you all uh, on, on the webinar some actionable takeaways and advice from Ryan since he's already lived through this. Um, we really wanted, to, and, I, and I know he wanted to share this uh, with all of you. So. The first question, one of the great questions we got was, you know, how did you know it was time to make this transformation? Um, and what really was the breaking point for you, Ryan, to, to make a change? Yeah. So initially, as I was saying, our problem was scale. We, we had two email designers that were creating nearly every email that, that went out, and we were being asked to support a, a broader group of stakeholders within the, the company. We hadn't at that time spanned it out to all of our regions and we knew that we needed to do something to increase our capacity and our scale in order to bring in a new crop of stakeholders in a new region. So uh, we knew that we had to do something. So that was the initial motivation for moving to that, that tokens and, and templates model. Um, and then the, the breaking point after that was when our requesters were, were happy with the new model, they were happy with the, the faster turnaround time, but then when we started to get requests that didn't meet our, our existing templates, uh, we were either telling them, okay, you'll have to wait until we build a new template, or you have to change your request to meet one of the, the, the pre-built templates that, that we already have and that, that were pretty locked down. So we were, we were telling our stakeholders that either you don't get what you want or you're gonna have to wait a longer time to get what you want. And, and neither one of those were, were the answer that they needed to hear because they, they had their, their jobs to do and they had their campaigns that they needed to execute and we needed to find a way to allow them to have it both ways. Yeah, that, that's awesome. And I know that we had chatted together just about the whole idea of how do you decide who gets access to Marketo? to be able to do what they need to do in there? And, and really, how do you make that decision of like, do you get everyone in there or do you have a key amount of people in there? I, I'm curious at Citrix how you guys decided uh, which way to go on that. Yeah, so as I mentioned before, we do have a lot of users in Marketo, but the number of users who have access to do things that impact external contacts is actually pretty small and, and limited to marketing operations users. So when, when some of our stakeholders would, were starting to come to us saying, yeah, I've got someone on my team who used to do Marketo at another company, can't they just have access and, and build their own emails? And we knew that if we started opening the door for, for special cases like that, then we would lose control and lose governance and it, we wouldn't necessarily know 
who would who would be responsible for something if, if something went wrong. And so we needed to be able to, to be sure we had a, a firm understanding of who was doing what and who had access to do what. And we felt like building emails was was a, an action that, that belonged with the, the program managers and marketing who are responsible for their campaigns and their messaging. And so we wanted to enable them to do that element of it. And uh, we, we felt like uh, some, a platform like Mac, which would give them the em empowerment to do the, the tasks that they were responsible and they wanted to be hands-on while, while keeping the, the risk of having non-experienced users out of our Marketo instance was, was the right balance for us. Awesome, that's, that's great advice there. Um, so I, I think maybe just in general, you know, we're talking a lot about email, but maybe if we could bring it up even a level further, you know, I, I, I'm curious your approach to how you research a new MarTech solution at, at Citrix. Can you maybe share with us kind of how you guys approach this and, and give the audience sort of some key advice uh, of if they're going to be looking for new solutions, what they should be thinking about? Sure, and so as, as we show on the screen here that we were looking for something that would, again, balance is a key word that we keep using, would, in this case would balance the capabilities with the ease of use. Um, so we, we needed a solution that we knew would be adopted by individuals globally who had a, a wide range of technical skills and experience. Some teams had individuals who had a lot of Marketo experience or email experience, uh, perhaps from previous roles in other companies, and other teams were, were very non-technical and, and didn't want something that had too many bells and whistles that they just needed to be able to build an email and get get on with it and move on to something else. So we needed something that could balance both, both sides of that. So if any feature or platform seemed too complicated, we, we knew it wouldn't be well adopted and, and that could be a roadblock and, and put the whole project at risk. So uh, that was really important to us. And the other thing that was important is, you know, we, like every other large company that I've worked for, have some, some very specific uh, processes that are unique to the way that we do business. And so it was important to us that we had uh, had th some of those things covered when, when considering a new technology. Uh, one example of that is that we have very specific um, methods for how we do uh, campaign tracking and UTM tracking within the URL of, of any email. And so we knew that if we were going to implement a new way to build emails, that it needed to support the, the way that we have to build emails in order for our campaigns to be tracked by our analytics and our, and our um, CRM implementation. So having some of those specific needs that are unique to your company when, when considering a technology solution is, is definitely a, a critical upfront because you don't want to put something in place and then realize it doesn't work with your other system. So that was really important to us as well. Awesome. Uh, I know uh, you know, Citrix is a big company, you know, like, like any enterprise company, there's a lot of stakeholders that are involved in, in a decision of, of changing a big process like creating emails or bringing a new MarTech vendor on board. Are you able to share with us just how did you approach this? And, and can you share any advice that you would give to other people who may be thinking about doing something like this? Sure. So as, 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 we, were, as we were considering this, the part of the reason that we, we needed a new solution is that our, our stakeholders in marketing field sales were ask, ask, asking for more creative options, more flexibility in the templates and the way they build emails. But at the same time, they needed more speed. They, they wanted to be able to go to market with their, their, their campaigns more quickly. And at the same time, we were also being asked to, to bring on a new crop of stakeholders in a new region. So the way we saw it is our options were either to add headcount, wrap up marketing operations to increase that capacity with our existing processes, which that's always a challenge to, of course. Uh, we could grant access to Marketos for for, uh, for our requesters to, to build their own email campaigns, but we felt like that would add risk to our 
uh, other processes that, that they may not be familiar with, how something they did might impact other things. Uh, there are limited permission uh, capabilities within Marketo itself uh, that, that we felt were sufficient for, for what we needed to do. And, or we find a solution that enables non-technical, non-design users to create professional emails within our brand guidelines, which is, which is ultimately what we, what we end up doing. And when presenting it that way, it, it seemed to, uh, it seemed to resonate with our, with our leadership, with our execs, uh, that this was, this was the right way to go. It was, um, enabling our, our users across the globe to, to own their campaigns more end to end while also applying the, those guidelines that we needed to apply. And, and it also eliminated what we considered to be non-value add work, which was requesters would tell our marketing operations team, this is the content we want in the email. They'd go and copy and paste that into the, the tokens in Marketo. And we felt like that was duplicative effort that, that could be eliminated with a solution like this. That's, that's awesome, Ryan. And so I, I'm just picturing you there now. You You've spoken with your executives, you've got their buy-in. How, how, how did you approach the implementation of this? Um, can you just kind of walk us through that? Yeah, so with any process change, particularly in marketing operations, but I think it applies more broadly as well, you've got to understand your users and their goals. And if you're creating a, a software product or any product, you want to understand your customers as a, as an operations team, the, the marketing team and, and uh, our field marketing teams are our stakeholders. They are my customers. So it is, it's imperative for me to understand what it is they're trying to do and how they're trying to do it to develop a process and a way for them to achieve their goals um, and, and work together to do that. So with the, the best understanding that we have from working with them, we, we built what we considered to be an MVP, a uh, you know, minimum viable product of our implementation with Mac. And that involved building out some of the, the modules, which are kind of like the building blocks of the email. It might be a hero, a few hero modules, a few body copy modules, a few footer modules that can be mixed and matched to, to arrange into multiple variations of emails. And so we built that, that base level of, uh, of, of, the, of the implementation and we rolled that out to a pilot group of marketing operations users to be our, our first guinea pigs almost to be our internal group to, to use it to build a few emails um, this is that campaign team who is usually on the receiving end of requests and using marketo to build the emails with templates they were our first pilot users to to build this and we asked them hey if you were a field marketer or if you were one of our requesters using this what kind of challenges do you think you would face and how should we address them? So we, we got feedback, we reiterated, we added some, uh, some, some processes and we added some, some clarity in our training and we moved on to our first group of external users who were still within marketing, but they weren't within marketing operations. And, uh, and we did the same thing. So the second round, we, we got feedback, we got some users to, to agree to, to, to build some emails. They knew it wasn't fully, uh, fully rolled out yet, but, we needed to understand how those users would would use the product, would use NAC at, to build their emails and give us any feedback that we needed to address to make NAC work with our unique scenarios, our unique situations and processes at Citrix. And once we had those those different series of, of uh, smaller rollouts with feedback iteration, rollouts with larger group feedback iteration, then we're ready to, to roll out to some um, live user groups who are what we're considering to be advocate users. These are people who have volunteered saying, yeah, this, I've heard about this. I'd like to be uh, in the, uh, the initial rollout group and, and they will be our, our advocates in our stakeholder teams to, to help us uh, communicate out and to, to make sure that this is a successful implementation worldwide. Awesome. Yeah, I think, you know, definitely some key takeaways there for for everyone on i think regardless of what martech solution you're putting in place ryan outlined some great tips there which is you know always try and start small doing pilots getting some early wins and then building those advocates within your organization that are really going to be be able to help you sell this to to the rest of the company and it's definitely a big uh, change. Any change can can kind of uh, 
you know, cause uh, people to be able to need to learn new programs or systems or processes. And I think that kind of segues into our next question, which is, you know, this was a transformative change for you, Ryan. So, you know, how did this change your workflows and your processes? And how did you really figure out which ones needed to be optimized that would generate the most value for you? Yeah, so I think that the most noticeable change in our workflow is that several steps of the process were just eliminated altogether. And these are those duplicative and non-value add steps that I mentioned earlier. If you want to go on to the next slide, I've got a bit of an overview of, of our old versus our new process. So this is our old way. And it, it started with a, a marketer submitting a, a content doc for a, their particular email template. And we had a, a variety of these content docs that aligned with each of the different Marketo program templates. And they would tell us in this content doc exactly what the headline token should be, what the body copy and, all, and so on. And so they would basically create an email in a Word document form. They couldn't see what it actually would look like in email form until the demand center user on Marketing Ops would take that Word doc, copy and paste the values into the tokens and generate that preview that they would send a test back to the original requester for feedback or approval. Now, if you've ever tried building an email in a Word document table and then having someone else build it, it's going to end up looking a little different in reality than you might have imagined in your head. So we had frequent revisions where we would send them the test and they'd say, oh, that headline's longer than I thought it would be. It wraps to two lines. I need to make an adjustment. And they send that back and they we would make that revision, send another test. And that those multiple rounds of, of revisions, especially if you're in different time zones, starts to add not only hours, but sometimes days to the, the process to build just a single email um, before you can move on to the stage where you're building the, the campaign and the audience and launching the email in Marketo and analyzing. So fast forward to the, the process now is that we've eliminated the need for feedback and revision because we've enabled our end users who are writing the content to create the email themselves. Instead of dreaming up their content and putting it into a Word doc, they're putting it into a format where they can actually see the email itself and what it will look like. So they, are, they can work with it, they can adjust their copy to make it exactly the way they want it, and only then are they submitting their request to our marketing operations team, our demand center team, to then sync that email from NAC over into Marketo and build the audience and send the campaign. So we've, we've eliminated duplicative work by copying and pasting from one format in the Word doc into another format in Marketo, and we've eliminated the need for that back and forth and uh, delays between revisions and feedback. Yeah, that's, that's awesome, Ryan, and, and thanks again for sharing your change. I think, you know, I, as you go through that, you know, there are so many marketers out there where they're just struggling to get through, like, the day-to-day -day and get, get the urgent campaigns out the door and get, you know, put out the fires. How did you manage to find the time to actually dedicate towards a project like this that's kind of more strategic and uh, what advice would you give to other marketers out there to be able to try and focus on a larger initiative like this yeah i my advice would be anytime you're coming up with or dreaming up a new way to, to implement a process for your users or your stakeholders find something that would help you achieve that scale and speed and automation for yourself. So almost every time that I, in my marketing operations experience, you know, and particularly in marketing automation space and Marketo, anytime that I have a, a task that I consider to be time consuming or and sometimes just something that's a pain to do, I'm looking for a way to, to streamline that process, create, create a process that could automate it or create a template that would, that would streamline part of it. And, and almost every time I've done that, it's been for my personal, uh, I call it professional laziness, where if something is a pain that I don't want to do, find a way to make it easier. And, and usually that, that translates to a process that if, if you were to share it with a larger audience, 
would make their lives easier too. And so um, something like rolling out NAC, yeah, you still have to get your day-to-day -day campaigns done. You can't put your, your outbound email communications on hold while you implement a new platform. So you have to find the time to uh, to, to deliver on your day-to-day -day responsibilities while also transforming your processes to improve in the future. And so that's definitely a, a challenge and it's going to work a little differently at every, at every company. But we started out by continuing with our, our, our token and template method until our internal users had, had gotten a little bit familiar with, with, with building emails in Mac and they started one by one to instead of taking their Word document request and fulfilling it with the template, taking that and using it to build an email in NAC and NAC and moving on and, and executing that campaign the same way. So as we got used to using it in our day-to-day -day workflows, then we could help train our end users to do it in theirs as well. And it didn't, be, and that helps it from being such a, a start change all at once into more of a transformation uh, where you're able to smooth out any bumps along the way. That's awesome. That's awesome. So uh, I have one other question for you, but I, again, I would really encourage the audience. I see a few questions coming in already, but it'd be great. Uh, if you do have any questions, guys, we're doing this for you. So please uh, click on the Q&A icon at the bottom of your screen and submit, or, submit your questions and we'll do our best to I get to them all. We do have uh, about 20 minutes or so left here that we can do Q&A. So please send those in. Um, uh, and so Ryan, you know, as, we're, as other questions are coming in here, one other one that I had for you was, you know, your marketers were kind of in a scenario where they were populating Word documents uh, to get things done. So I'm curious, how was the reception as you guys uh, transformed your email creation process from those end users? So th this kind of goes along with, you know, with, with my kind of final advice, key piece of advice in the way that I would uh, advise anybody considering a change like this is that to ensure a successful rollout for, for a platform like NAC or really any any technology platform that, that impacts your end users is understanding their their goals and their workflows and, and, and how this change will affect them. You know, you need to know if you're if you're implementing a change how it will affect your end users day to day and their ability to get their campaigns and their work done. Because ultimately that's what we're all coming to work every day is to get our work done. And um, in, there's a, a great need to provide guidance and training along the way. So if you if you do all those things well, then the change that you're implementing will should be perceived as empowering your users. And if you don't do that well, then it might be perceived as just shifting work onto your users. And those two things can have a very very different perception uh, when they're rolled out. So. If, if you do all that well and you, you you roll it out in a way that that the teams are receptive to and it and it meets their needs and allows them to get their jobs done better and faster than before and they're going to feel like they are empowered to do their jobs even better than they were before and everybody will feel like it's a success but if they feel like you're just shoving additional steps onto them where somebody else used to make my email and now I have to make it myself well that, that rollout didn't achieve their needs and, and your implementation isn't going to be a success. So understanding their, their needs and their, their day to day will help you tremendously to, to make this a success. Awesome. Awesome stuff. So uh, one other question uh, we got from the audience is what, what's the main difference between creating emails and templates versus modules? So I would describe a template as a, a rigid combination of modules. So a, a module is a building block. A module is a, a header and a module is a, is a hero section and a module is a body you know, copy section. And modules can be mixed and matched to be combined into a, an email layout, whereas a template could be built from modules, but a template is a rigid set of modules put together in a way that 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 can't change. So, for us, a template was our Marketo program templates, where we had a variety of different 
modules put together in a rigid set of, uh, you know, of an email layout that we could clone it and we could fill it in, but we couldn't really do much adjustment to it without breaking our process, whereas modules are more flexible and can be combined in a variety of different ways to, to meet whatever particular campaign needs you, you have for that, that particular email. Yeah, it's a good way of, of describing it. I would say as well, you know, mo templates are sort of a group of modules that are already predetermined, whereas modules are those individual content blocks that you're able to give your marketers uh, the flexibility there to determine different module sets, really putting that creativity back in their hands, but where they're using pre approved uh, modules that brand has already kind of stamped their approval onto. Uh, question we got was, uh, so, so are you syncing every email into Marketo as a new template? How do you keep all of this organized in your Marketo? Uh, I definitely have some thoughts on that, but Ryan, curious to hear from you how you guys are doing that. Yeah, so this sounds like this question is coming from somebody who's had a little bit of experience with NAC. And that was a question that we had too, honestly, when we were researching the solution is that the way, you know, I'll let Pierce cover, you know, the, the more technical aspects of how the platform works. But we, we were wondering too how that would impact us if, if when you sync an email from NAC to Marketo, it creates a, a dedicated Marketo email template for that, that relationship. Uh, and we thought that that would be potentially cluttering as well, but we, we have found that it hasn't really been a, a, an issue for us. It, it's, um, the emails are able to be um, permanently linked between your Marketo and your NAC implementation. So if you make an edit in NAC and you need to rethink it to, to Marketo, it, it follows that pathway and it can update the email asset in Marketo. Uh, but we haven't had any need to um, to go into the the NAC email templates folder in our design studio where these these templates are created to to really do any management of those. Well, yeah, yeah, and just to kind of add on to that, so any email that you create in NAC and that you sync into Marketo or Eloqua. Uh, goes in as an email uh, with an associated email template and that template lives in your design studio um, uh, kind of buried in there and then you get you can pick which program you want to sync it to so you're syncing directly into the program level. Uh, and Pierce, I'll actually yeah. add one more thing to this. That was a concern we had when we were we were researching solutions, and there was another another tool we were looking at that didn't do it that way. And ultimately, we ended up liking the the way that that NAC um, has the implementation for the syncing of emails because it retains functionality like the Marketo editable section. So if you were to go into an email that is created in NAC and synced over to Marketo and you went into the editor in Marketo, which we haven't had a need to do that very often, but if we did, it still renders the, the Marketo editable sections, whereas the other tool we looked at didn't create email templates with each sync, but it also, if you went in to edit that email, you just got a, a big old piece of HTML that was hard to, to navigate. Yep. Awesome. Uh, another question we had here was how long, I think Ryan, this one's for you, how long did it take to get NAC up and running at Citrix? So I think that the, so for us, the, the, the timeline between when we signed the contract to, to having some, some live users was maybe a little bit longer than, than it needed to be, but we were trying to be very careful. But even still, it was about three months between sign up and, and, and users, uh, live end users being in the system. I think the, uh, the timeline for that first pilot group that I mentioned before uh, could have been as short as a number of weeks or even a month, uh, depending, on, depending on your, you know, the, who you have building the actual building block. So we still used one of those designers on my team who used to be building every email. He was the one building the majority of our independent content modules. And so that would have been the bulk of the work to, to get off the ground into that, 
that minimum viable product. Most of our implementation has been trying to be very careful with uh, training of our different stakeholder groups, making sure that we understand their different needs because they're all different from one another and, and make sure that the way that we've implemented it at Citrix meets each of those teams uh, unique needs uh, so that it is a successful rollout. But I, I don't think that it necessarily had to be that long if you had you know, fewer stakeholder groups or uh, different, um, you know, if you didn't have so much variety in their needs, uh, then it could certainly be faster than that. But for us, it was about three months from, from signing the contract to having live users in, in the system. Excellent. Um, so if, if we didn't get to your question, uh, we'll respond over email. And if you guys have any other questions, please let us know. I definitely want to thank uh, Ryan, our, our guest speaker today, for sharing his story and uh, just take, taking us through your, your email transformation and all of the advice that you're able to share. I want to thank all of the attendees for joining us today. I know everyone is super busy, so we truly appreciate your time. Um, as I mentioned, this will be recorded and we'll be sending the recording out within the next week. Um, if anyone out there wants some additional advice from myself or Ryan on how you can uh, scale your email within your uh, organization, my email is here. I love talking about this stuff and would be happy to have a discussion with you. Uh, thanks again, everyone, so much, and we hope you have a good rest of your day. Cheers. Bye.